Hey, this is Joy. Welcome back to Inktoberfest. I am having a blast and I'm learning so much. Today I am sharing eight cards, um, showing you everything you need to know about how to blend on dark cardstock. Some of my cards are a mixed media feel, others are clean and simple, but the most important thing is, is that we're getting inky. So for the first card panel, I inked up the skeleton from Dream Reader with Stowe Flurry's Pigment Ink, which is new from Maker Forte. And then I brought out a second panel and I inked that one up with the Stowe Flurries as well. And this is where I'm doing something new. I feel like I don't give the neon inks enough love. So I am bringing those in and I'm starting with Ra Ra Skirt, which is a hot pink, and I am putting that on the top portion of the skeleton and then I bring in purple rain and then I stamp that with the misty and you're going to see that nice vibrant stamping I love this more than you know but I made the mistake of embossing it with clear embossing powder and when I did that that really brought the image back to a gray image I don't love it I don't hate it but you're going to see it's kind of a purplish gray so I decided to keep going and I put it back in the misty and I stamped it over the embossing powder or embossed image with snow flurries. And all that did was brighten the image. And then I come back in with the clear embossing powder again. And now I have a nice white skeleton that pops off the page. So basically we now have one panel without the extra ink and one with. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but we will um, get into that a little bit more. Here I'm just showing you how that embossing did brighten up, but it's still a little bit on the gray side. And now I'm comparing it to the original. So my next step is I'm bringing in another piece of Eclipse Black cardstock, and I am blending the Snow Flurries pigment ink all over the panel. And I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but I keep one blending brush that is designated for white pigment ink and I so that I'd never contaminate it. In fact, I write the word white on top of it so that I never screw up. Now, you know as soon as I say that, I will screw up, but um, we'll see if that happens, right? Now I'm going to do another experiment with the neon inks and I bring in the um, Outrages which is a neon orange and I start blending in a circular or oval fashion on the middle of the cardstock and when I first put that down it looks really vibrant. I would highly suggest that you heat or dry the white pigment ink before you move on to the next step because essentially as I continue to add ink to my panel, I start pushing the white around and then my neon inks are sort of um, sinking down into the paper. So keep that in mind when you're doing this to dry your panel first and you're gonna have much better results, but I wanted to leave that in so that you could see it. Next, I am bringing in Raw Raw Skirt and I am going around the perimeter of the outrages just to get a gradient of colors. And again, I am pushing this out. I am moving that white pigment um, ink around and I'm really not getting the result that I wanted. I love it right now and I wish that I had left it alone, but I didn't know. And that's shame on me, but we're learning together Again, I have only used these neon inks a few times. I love them. I think that they are amazing and I want to keep playing with them in the future. So hopefully you'll meet me over on my channel. You can find me at uh, joywilsoninc.com and then it'll take you everywhere you need to go so that we can be forever crafty friends and um, you can follow my makes, my takes, my inky antics, all of those good things. Um, I really do appreciate that if you would look me up. I am bringing in Purple Rain, which happens to be one of my favorite songs as well as one of my favorite colors. 
and I am blending that again as a halo around the raw raw skirt. And this gives us a really nice pastel background. If you know me or you have been around Maker Forte for any amount of time, you know that I like dramatic backgrounds and I'm never going to settle for a pastel or light background. So we're going to keep going and we're going to figure out how we're going to get this thing to pop. And what does that mean for me? First, I take the Purple Rain and I go ink pad to the paper and I put down a really dark coat. Um, and then I start to blend that so that we have a circular perimeter. And I like it. I actually really do like it. Um, but I wanted a more vibrant background. I'm still struggling with how do I want this to pop? How do I want the contrast? Um, so after spending a little bit of time on this, I decided to bring in some other pigment inks. Um, I, I bring in the VersaFine family. But before I do that, I am still fighting. I'm trying to use these neon inks. And as I'm looking back at it on screen, I see that it's much more vibrant than what it looked like in person. Sometimes when you're right over an image, you really don't see what's cooking. And if I had just taken time to breathe, that would have gotten better. So I do bring in the VersaFine inks in Fantasia, which is the dark purple, and the Purple Delight, which is the pink. And I just use my blending brushes. I do have a separate set of blending brushes for pigment inks and I do highly recommend that because they're not compatible with your most other inks like distress oxides, distress inks, dye inks. So I do that. Now you're going to see that I come in with the Dream Reader Skeleton again and I stamp that with white and look at it. It popped. It was awesome. So when I put the two black panels next to it and I put the purple in the middle, you'll see how big of a difference I made on that hard stock, but I was too blindsided or too nearsighted to be able to see it. Now we're going to go into a new technique for me, and this is where we're using our reinkers. So I'm sticking with the same neon inks and the Snow Flurries reinkers. I wet my glass mat, put down the white pigment ink, and then I added Vegas Strip, which is my boyfriend. Ra Ra skirt and what is the yellow one? I'll have to link that up. I'll have to put that up on the screen. I'm not sure what the name of that is off the top of my head. Shame on me. And I start ink swishing. Look how cool and vibrant this reminds me of something straight out of a roller rink or something. Now I just aged myself. And I continue to use Eclipse Black cardstock and I ink smush and I just keep going. Um, this is so much fun. Who knew somebody who doesn't like to get their hands messy and dirty had so much fun. Here I am bringing in, I know it looks very similar to Eclipse Black, but this is a dark gray from my, um, from my scraps actually. And my inks got a little too muddled, so I didn't get a huge vibrant um, mix on that cardstock. So I did put down some more colors and I added water to that just to get the inks moving. And I love the swirls and the different um, ripples that I'm getting with that. Here I am bringing in a peacock color again from my stash. It's just something I had uh, left over. And here is another piece of Eclipse Black, and I'm loving this diagonal look. See that piece up, up that's up there now? That that's the dark uh, gray cardstock. That was like a 65-pound cheap stuff from one of the big box stores. And I really had to work that paper because it was curling up and it did not handle water. So I truly do recommend like a 100-pound or 110-pound cardstock. Here I am just drying all of my panels. I'm leaving this in just so that you can see how they uh, kind of have metamorphed. I love them. They have a lot of uh, the same properties as oxides, but you're getting a huge amount of 
color with these neon inks that you don't necessarily get with other inks. This is that one that was pretty muddled. Here's the peacock. And I actually do end up using most of these panels. Um, the ones that I don't like, I practiced on. And um, you're going to see that. I left that all in. Here are some quick looks at the dried panels that I had. Um, and I'm showing you there that it is dry. But it's just a very concentrated ink. Um, just so that when you go to make these, you'll know that sometimes you're going to have ink sitting on top. And that is just a property of pigment inks when um, they dry, right? That's the reason that we use pigments. Here's that dark, uh, gray, dark gray cardstock. And it turned out pretty darn cool. And I do use this in a card later on. Um, so I'm using a crazy panel here. And I bring in the Welsh Dragon, and I'm trying to make like a galaxy background. And you've seen me do this a few times where I add different colors. Right now, by using the dye inks on top of this dry panel, I'm trying to send some of those colors into the background or more send it back into the cardstock. I come in with Vega Strip and I randomly place that on the perimeters. I use Sugar Plum, which I think really makes it look like a night sky. And this is where I think it's really starting to come together is with the Sugar Plum. I actually end up loving this panel and it's one of my favorite cards. You're going to see that here in a minute. I do at the end bring in some Eclipse Black ink just to bring the vignette in even further to give us the illusion of a night spooky sky. And uh, this is what it looks like. And this is where I was too afraid to ink it. I wasn't sure how my inks were going to show up. So I used one of the panels that I wasn't in love with. And I am stamping um, one of the uh, gemstone stamps on that. And I first did it in white. And you're going to see that it didn't show up very much and I'm glad that I you know I attempted that because now I know how to proceed with my other cards and you're gonna see that I mean it's cool it's just not it's not what I wanted I do the same thing on the peacock color and again it's a pretty card or a pretty panel it just wasn't the look that I wanted for my cards today so I tried to ink that up a couple of times with the Snow Flurries ink and it just didn't pop or give me the contrast that I wanted. Um, the ink didn't do anything wrong. The ink did exactly what it's supposed to do. I just like a black silhouette for the most part, more so than a white silhouette. So this was my uh, trial on these and I, like I said, I'm glad that I tried it. I hope that you will give your inks a try to see what you like the best. Here you're going to see how they both turned out. Now that I've done my experiment, I know that I want to use black. So I used Versify Nocturne ink. I stamped down the, I believe it was Embrace Change, it was the butterfly image. And then I applied the uh, clear embossing powder and when you apply the embossing powder it makes that silhouette even more vibrant and crisp which is the reason I did that because I wanted the high contrast on this panel. I then stamped one of these sentiments from the same Embrace Change sets and I did that with embossing glue ink. I embossed that with fine detail embossing powder and I applied that to my card in a strip. And here you're going to just see me putting this uh, A2 size card together. And I think this looks amazing. This is maybe my favorite card. I might say that more than once. But here we're, we're going to look at another one. Here I'm using the Dandelion stamp set. And I'm doing this in three ways. The first way is with white. Uh, the Snow Flurry's Pigment Ink on black. And I'm having to stamp this two or three times to make it very vibrant um, because 
Again, I want this to show up on the black and I want it to be a crisp image. Now I am using embossing glue ink and I'm inking up the exact same stamp. I do recommend that you clean your stamp really well like with the totally awesome uh, cloth that will remove all remnants of ink. I then emboss this in clear powder and you're thinking what am I doing? Right, I'm going to come with black on black and yeah, but I've got a surprise for you. As soon as this is done melting and it cools down, you want to make sure that the powder has cooled down so that you don't lose any of the detail. I then bring in snow flurries and I am doing pad to paper technique and I am swiping this as dark as possible. And it looks like a hot mess, I know. And you have to trust the process. You've got to try this. This is kind of like the Jacob's coat. I'm sorry, Jacob's coat or a emboss resist. I bring in my microfiber cloth and I start buffing off the excess. And here you go. All of the black paper was trapped underneath the clear embossing powder. And you've got this really cool panel. I love this. I think this is a great technique. And I encourage you to try this with everything you've got. I then come in with another piece of Eclipse Black and embossing glue ink. I then bring in Vegas Strip Kaleidoscope Powder. And I'm just using a brush that I had from my stash. I am tapping the excess off. And then I am just applying this to the panel. And you're going to see how cool this looks. You're going to get this kind of a blue, kind of a white. It's just amazing. I do tap off the excess. And then I used my microfiber cloth and I buffed off the front panel. And here you go. You're going to see all the shift changing in the light. I'm even going to um, zoom in a little bit so that you can see this. This is just stunning. I love, love, love this card. I think I've said that. Here are the three cards. I cut each one of these panels down to, I think, three and a half by oh, four and three quarters. And then on one of them, I matted in white. The other ones, I matted directly onto black cardstock, or I'm sorry, an A2 black uh, base. And I think these cards turned out absolutely beautiful. They're the exact same stamp, but they look completely different. But aren't these a wonderful set to give away as a gift? Here I'm coming in with one of the um, mixed media pieces that we did earlier. This was actually my favorite panel. I was afraid to do this. Now, here is a fact about me. I hate snakes as if one of them ever got into my house. I would leave lock, stock, and barrel and never come back. So it's funny that I'm using this uh, stamp from Dream Reader. And then I am bringing in a sentiment from What's Your Sign? And I'm using the Capricorn because I'm a Capricorn. And ironically, the snake is my sign in the Chinese Zodiac. And obviously in the actual zodiac uh, I've got the Capricorn so this was a perfect set for me hopefully that works out for you for your birthday I did emboss that in white I removed um, some excess powder with a small uh, paintbrush and I just left that in so that you could see it and then I matte I'm sorry I melt the powder and I just wanted you to see that um, this card who knew that I was going to love a card with a snake on it. If you would have ever told me that, I would have laughed at you. Isn't it funny how sometimes we don't embrace the things that scare us, but when we actually use them, try them, do all the things, we find out that we can come up with some really fun ideas and fun projects. So, yeah, sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone and... To be honest with you, pretty much everything in this um, video 
got me out of my comfort zone other than the fact that I love ink. I love everything ink. Here's one of those dark gray cardstock panels. This is the one I liked. I love that yellow vein in it. And I am bringing in the skull image from Dream Reader. And I'm inking that up with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. And I make sure that I get a really good impression. I think I do ink that up twice just so that it pops off the page. Yep, I'm confirming that. I am doing that a second time. I think that's just really good practice when you're going on top of anything that's got an oxidized or a white pigment background. And then I bring in a sentiment from, what is that one? I think it's from Dream Readers and it's called Dem, Dem Bones. I think that's cute as could be. Finally, I bring in my Eclipse Black ink and I ink around the edges to create a vignette, which is kind of my go-to. I add this to an A2 side folding card base. Um, it's one of the perfect folds from Maker Forte. I am using my ink swishing tool to get a good adhesion with my liquid glue. And here I am showing you this card. Pretty darn cool, right? So uh, this kind of concludes all of my um, card making that you're going to see on screen. I'm showing you these three panels from, I'm sorry, the three panels from the skeleton, the two panels I didn't use, and here are some last looks at my cards. I do love this skeleton. I think they turned out cool as can be. I added some sequins and some stickles to make them look like enamel dots. And then uh, here... These are my final cards. So I hope you loved day 17 of Inktoberfest. I loved being with you. And until next time, keep crafting. Bye-bye, friends.